For a very few years after the communist revolution of 1917, Russian painters were allowed to be as revolutionary as their political commissars, largely because the commissars were far too busy to bother much about art. Kandinsky and others exhibited their works in the great halls of culture, including the former Winter Palace. And the state even bought, for the first and last time, a clutch of new paintings by a young Russian dreamer, Marc Chagall. Among them, this joyful fantasy called Promenade, depicting Chagall himself and his young bride. She flies like a bird in a celebration of their happiness. She is Bella, Bella the Beautiful, Bella the Jewish bride who had waited almost four years for Chagall to return from Paris and marry her. Chagall himself, not into self-flattery, a clown's face wearing rouge on his cheeks, which had so horrified his respectable in-laws who would have preferred a nice civil servant for their daughter to marry, not some loony artist. It's a painting about the triumph of love, the euphoria of living, the joy of the spirit, the joy of physical closeness and physical desire. Even Bella's shoes do a kind of dance, waltzing with the hem of her purple dress. His own feet are airborne, as if he will soon join her in their flight of love and of happiness. Her silence is mine, her eyes mine, Chagall wrote when he first met her. I feel she has known me always, my childhood, my present life, my future. And behind them lies the town where they met and where they live. Vitebsk, with his parents' house. The darker side is masked. Vitebsk was in the area to which Jews were confined in Tsarist Russia. They needed special permits to travel and were restricted to certain trades. They weren't full citizens. The Russian Orthodox Church looks unreal and incongruous in a town of 60 synagogues and where half the population was Jewish. Chagall included it because it was there. He called his Vitebsk paintings documents. They document the place he loved where he fell in love, and where he found himself trapped by war and revolution. Now I am here, he wrote, my town and my tomb. Russia was all covered with ice, he said, and Lenin was turning everything topsy-turvy while I returned to my pictures. And in his pictures, there's neither ice nor any hint of revolution. It is summer and sunshine and the burgeoning of a new life where lovers drink wine and turn the fields into a garden of flowers. Everything in the painting is a metaphor of the artist's joy and celebration. Wine, love and laughter. Here is Chagall at 30, with the gaiety of a figure from Italian Commedia dell'arte, Harlequin dancing with his Columbine. And grasped in his right hand a small bird, Another symbol of flight, a blue bird, a magical creature from folklore. Symbolic birds and beasts were to appear in Chagall's paintings all his life. The face of the clown for whom true reality is what lies behind the day-to-day -day appearance of things. The artist creates images which mirror his imagination. There are numerous self-portraits from these years in Vitebsk many of them more narcissistic and intense, almost Byronic, searching out the inner fire behind the clown's makeup, trying to capture his own sense of destiny, what it is that drives him in his pursuit of dreams. Like so many Russian artists of his generation, Chagall had spent his apprentice years in Paris, his second Vitebsk, he called it. The art of yesterday and today swamped him. The Sabbath, was the first picture he painted in Paris on his arrival in 1910. It's a satirical work, clumsily so, none of the later colour and lightness. People slumped in exhaustion from doing nothing on the Sabbath day. The artist has looked at Rembrandt, none too perceptively, and more particularly at a painting of another lamplit interior, Van Gogh's Night Café. Very soon, Paris opened Chagall's eyes to colour, 
Impressionism, particularly Monet, the Fauvism of Derain and Matisse, the Expressionism of Soutine and Modigliani, who were his friends. And back in Vitebsk, he began to use Parisian colors, filling his paintings with light, and sometimes with gloom. The Jewish community of Vitebsk was his own background. These intense Jewish faces, whose inward-looking eyes seemed to gaze only more darkly into Chagall's own world of dreams. Hasidic Jews lived a life apart, second-class citizens whose only true homeland was their faith. Theirs was the culture which fed Chagall's imagination. Bella came from that same world, except her father was a wealthy merchant. While Chagall was in Paris, she became a student in Moscow and studied to be an actress. Then he returned, and they became secret lovers. I only had to open my bedroom window, he wrote, and love and flowers entered with her. Chagall's celebrations of his love for Bella are among the most radiant pictures he ever painted. Fairy tales in which eroticism and laughter. Are woven together. Here is Bella in white soon after their marriage. She looks surprised and a little dishevelled, as well she might, with flowers in one hand and her husband perched on her shoulders. He grins and raises a toast to the joy of life, while overhead an angel hovers in benediction. The first of Chagall's flights of lovers he painted in 1915, shortly before he and Bella were married. On his birthday, she had come to see him in his rooms, bringing with her a bunch of flowers. Bella would often visit him like this during the months when they were secret lovers. She would arrive in the evening and slip away next morning. But this time it was special: the birthday and the flowers. She remembers him exclaiming, "Don't move!" And he painted us rising as easily as can be to the ceiling, hand in hand. Invariably, Chagall's flights of imagination are enacted against a backcloth of Vitebsk, the low hill with the church again, his parents' house, the little wooden buildings of the town, all neatly arranged like a child's toy village, a place like no other. He wrote, a strange town, an unhappy town, a boring town. Though he never managed to paint it looking either unhappy or boring, but always homely, cozy, miniature, a setting for young lovers' dreams. Over the town is another of those aerial fantasies Chagall painted during that first year of the Russian Revolution. The strange town, the unhappy town. Chagall's description seems more apt when he turns his gaze on the people who live there. In front of those same houses. Sits an elderly Jew slumped on a bench, hardly aware of the world around him. His thoughts are far away among the biblical texts, which enclose the scene like a curtain. More dreams, and very soon a rude awakening. Founding an art academy in Vitebsk in 1919, his aim, he said, was to make ordinary houses into museums and the average citizen into a creator. To which the president of the local Soviet replied. Which do you think the more important, Comrade Chagall, to repair the bridge or allocate money to your academy? Chagall left Vitebsk, and in 1922 he left Russia forever, taking his dreams with him to the West. 